What's up everyone and welcome to my channel Geek Ecology where we take your favorite fandoms flora and fauna and talk about them as if they were real. On this episode we are going to be talking about the Dratini line of Pokemon, their general ecology as well as their indeterminate growth. So let's get started. Dratini's Pokedex says that it sheds the outer layer of its skin and this is exactly how some reptiles and amphibians attain such large sizes. Shedding skin is actually called ecdysis, and it's the sloughing off of the outer layer of the epidermis. This helps compensate for an increase in body size, as well as removes ectoparasites. And you notice that Dratini doesn't have arms. So without arms, it might need some help getting that outer layer of skin off. Modern day snakes try to find hard and rough surfaces to try and rub against, but this might be a little extra challenging, given that Dratini primarily resides in aquatic environments. Because of this, Dratini has evolved this very unique strategy to help it shed its skin. And this strategy involves waterfalls. Dratini's Pokedex says that it hides behind waterfalls when it is going through ecdysis, or when it's trying to shed its skin. This isn't because it's embarrassed or it wants to hide, it's because the force of the fast flowing water down the waterfall can actually help peel off the outer layer of skin from the Dratini. This is quicker and much more energy efficient than wiggling around rocks for hours on end trying to remove that extra layer of skin. And because of this need to be near waterfalls in order to shed its skin, Dratini is primarily found in fast flowing streams and rivers. Fast flowing water has higher oxygen levels and is important to Pokemon like Dratini that have gills and need oxygen in the water in order to breathe. And yeah, those things that we're looking at are gills. Look at the gills of this larval salamander here. They look kind of similar, right? There are a couple different kinds of salamanders that inhabit the same kind of fast flowing streams. Most notably the giant salamanders in the family Cryptobranchidae. These represent the largest living salamanders and are found in southeast China as well as the eastern United States. The reason that not many Dratini have been found is that they likely inhabit the rocky bottoms of these streams, weaving in and out of crevices looking for fish or crustaceans to eat as prey. Many of these streams are located in hard to access environments such as high up in the mountains. And Dratini also has a certain affinity for living near cave systems. Maybe they like the unique rock structures that they offer, or it's possible that caves are just cleaner and quieter for the Dratini that live there, and they aren't driven away by people nearly as often. If Dratini gets pushed out of its usual environment, or finds a reason to leave these clear, fast-flowing streams, either to reduce competition for resources or find a more suitable environment, I believe this is when it evolves into Dragon Egg. Dratini's external gills grow larger and become secondarily adapted for flight once it evolves. These changes help dragon air breathe when out of aquatic environments. Gills can still work out of water, like many crustaceans use gills to breathe even when they're on land, but they are usually less effective. Some of these changes have helped dragon air adapt to marine environments since it's occasionally found in oceans and seas instead of just these clear streams. I initially thought that Dratini and dragon air were some kind of amphibian, and the fact that they shed their skin and they make luxury boots out of Dratini skin makes me believe that they're somewhere in between reptile and amphibian. Dratini has large external gills like many other larval salamanders and its skin is closer to skin instead of scales. But most amphibians don't have to go to such great lengths to shed their skin like Dratini does. And it's extremely challenging for amphibians to inhabit marine environments because their skin is so porous and they lack specialized organs to get rid of the extra salt that they take in from salt water. But I think evolving into Dragonair helps get around some of these challenges. Amphibians in salt water are actually in danger of drying out due to osmosis, which is the movement of water from an area of high concentration to low concentration of solutes. And solutes are just stuff dissolved in water, like salt. So water wants to move from an area where there is a lot of salt to an area where there is less salt. So when you put a freshwater organism like an amphibian in salt water, water will actually move out from their body into the water in their environment and dry them out. So to compensate for this, dragon hair has evolved less permeable skin aided by a layer of scales like those found in reptiles. And also a gland to help them excrete some of this excess salt taken in when they are living in the sea. Which is this gem looking thing near the base of its throat. It has a crystalline appearance because it's excreting crystals, salt crystals. A similar organ can be found in a different marine reptile, the marine iguana. 
Theirs isn't as flashy and it's really just kind of spraying salt out of the nose, but it still gets the job done. Dragonair likely has a similar diet to Dratini feeding on fish and crustaceans. But they may opportunistically take some bird prey since they have somehow evolved the ability to fly. Its horn might be used for intraspecific combat, which is combat between two members of the same species. And this might be used to establish feeding areas, or give it a little bit of physical defense from predators, in case dragon attacks aren't doing the trick. When many animals reach sexual maturity, they increase their distance traveled each day and may even go to new areas to try and find mates or to lay eggs. This is what happens when Dragonair evolves into Dragonite. Dragonite needs to be able to cover vast distances in order to find mates, especially since the Dragonite population density is pretty low. I mean, how many Dragonite do you see just flying around out there? Because it travels such a great distance, Dragonite is likely to encounter many different habitats and also enemies. This has led to the evolution of the much more substantial body and battling ability of Dragonite. Dragonite has developed lungs so that it's no longer restricted to aquatic environments, and it can also fly somehow using these tiny little wings, but we can't talk about these wings because then we would be here all day. So just assume that Dragonite uses a little bit of Poke magic and it's really tiny wings to fly around. Because this thing just shouldn't be able to fly. I mean, it weighs over 400 pounds and a four foot wingspan just isn't going to cut it. And moving on. Once Dragonite has located a mate, they return to freshwater streams and ponds in order to lay their eggs. These are fairly safe and secluded environments and explain why Dratinis are found here but not Dragonites. This is similar to sea turtles returning to the exact island to lay their eggs that they were born on, or salmon leaving the ocean and swimming upstream to spawn. This latter strategy is called being anadromous. It's when an organism lives part of its life in the ocean, but then returns to a freshwater environment in order to lay eggs. The eggs are likely buried under rocks or loose gravels in the water environments, much like modern day frogs and salamanders. Dragonite might be using lungs to breathe, but Dratini still has gills. Therefore, it needs to be in the water in order to respire and breathe. Dragonite guards the eggs to ensure their survival and their hatching. And once the eggs hatch, Dragonite can return to the marine environment where it has plenty of space and food and will stay there until it needs to breed again. And there you have it, the almost complete ecology of the Dragonite line. Let me know what you guys think of the video in the comments and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date on all things geek ecology. You can also check out my TikTok for my shorter format videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.